I have no African descent in my blood. I'm a, I'm a Native American. So literally, I'm a Cherokee, I'm a black friend, I'm a red tail Indian. That's what's in my blood. And the other is mixed with European. Like, I have no African descent in my blood. I'm a, I'm a Native American. So literally, I'm a Cherokee, I'm a black friend, I'm a red tail Indian. That's what's in my blood. And the other is mixed with European. Like, I have no African descent in my blood. I'm a, I'm a Native American. So literally, I'm a Cherokee, I'm a black friend, I'm a red tail Indian. That's what's in my blood. And like I have no African descent in my blood. I'm a, I'm a Native American. So literally, I'm a Cherokee. I'm a black friend. I'm a red tail Indian. That's what's in my blood. And the other is mixed with European. If All right, man. It's the time for one piece. We're gonna get into this Waka Flocka thing. I see a lot of people giving him backlash about what he said um, because they think that when we say we Native Americans that you know people don't understand they don't understand the true history in this country alright so for those of you guys who just probably just met me due to the fact that um, you probably clicked on to it and say Waka Flocka or whatever the fans is Waka Flocka um, let me just introduce y'all into something that y'all probably never a lot of a lot of y'all probably don't even know okay so we're gonna get into this So Waka Flocka was saying, right? He was saying he's Native American. Alright? So now this is the 1828 Webster Dictionary and the meaning of the word American. It said Native of America originally applied to the Aborigines or copper color races found here by Europeans. It said, but now, now applied to descendants of Europeans born in America, which we know that this is this is just false. They basically just Forced themselves to be American, but the true Americans are a Native American originally applied to the Aborigines or copper color races. Now, like I tell most people that come to my page, um, 1828 is like a hundred and I believe 80 something years. So you're 189 years. So 189 years ago. Now we talking about today. We saying today the people who was found here, the true Americans, are Native Americans, right? But now the people that call themselves Americans, or the most people that apply themselves to Americans, are they apply themselves to Europeans? But it's telling you in 1828, okay? It said a native of America originally applied to the Aborigines or copper color races found here by Europeans. So who are the Aborigines and who are the copper color races? For any for any of you brainiacs that come here, you gotta tell me because we call these people Indians, Redskins, and Native Americans. Why in the definition of the word American is not saying that? This is the 1828, so let me just remind y'all again. It say Native American originally applied to the Aborigines or copper color races. All right, so a lot of people giving his brother flack, right? So we're gonna play another video, right? So, um, Waka Flocka, this is for you. So, j just the fact that you acknowledge that you're Native American and you do probably know that Black people was already here or Aborigine people was already here, he probably know that there's no such Black has no standing in law. There's no such people called black people. So he is smart about what he's saying. He's saying he's not an African. He can't prove, you can't prove to him that he is an African. Now he's saying a little bit of European that's in his blood. He know that he has some light skinned people in his family and he know that they ain't come, that they ain't indigenous. So they had to be just like a lot of these tribes. You see a lot of these white people in these tribes. You wonder where they came from. And you see a lot of these, remember we, we, we normally term Native Americans as people with this straight hair and they come in, they either they look half European or they look all European or they look Mongoloid or they look Spanish or they look um, Hispanic or whatever. So, them are the different ones we see. But when we see blacks, anytime you see a black inside of a tribe, you automatically say that he is from, uh, from Africa. Alright, so let me show y'all something. Alright, so we're going to play this. Shout out to Lex Well, because I actually um watched a video with him with um I watched a video that he had and I actually seen this and I thought that this would definitely be useful for my cause. So shout out to Lex Well. Got to your friends. Lisa, what you went on was translated from
from Not Even Accident to English is two hawks. I am Director General for the Federation and uh, Palmy M. Sajim of the Meshipog Nagansi Tribe, which is also one of the chartering members of the Federation. Chief Nikot of the Munsell Park. I am the Chief Development Officer for Farmer, and also the Chief of the Munsell Park. Ronnie here, and I'm on the Royal Council 7, welcome to the Tribe, welcome to the So, in respect to uh, what is FANA, I think it would make sense to give a kind of crash course in terms of what is FANA and what it does to then understand um, anything else coming from FANA. And let me add this to it. Um, you know, they act, this video actually about a brother named Hamak. And um, I'm not going to really get into, you know, the slander um, or whatever's going on. You know, I have learned some things from the brother. Um, you know, they got some things that they need to work out. As far as um, this tribe and I guess the NAAIP, um, let me also add in before I, we go on, right? You see this brother right here, right? You ought to automatically say that this brother definitely African, right? You look at him and say that he had to come from somebody that was black. Now, when you look at him, right? And you look at running there, okay? Now, I don't know about a lot of people. And I'm going to keep this 100. Everybody got somebody in her, their family that look like her. I mean, if you have light skin, because I've met black people who don't have no light skin people in their family. I have met them on numerous occasions, especially down in the South. Unless, like, a lot of these new interracial dating going on or whatever. Though, but I have met um, black people, especially like my father's side of the family. You don't have no light skin people in his family. My mother's side of the family got people who look like her. Or whatever, and look like him. So now, when you see him, you look at the hair. You see, you see these people with this straight hair. Now, where do you think he came from? I mean, he he got Aborigine in his family. He gonna tell you that his father probably was black and his mother probably was white, or his father father probably was half black and his mother probably. It's gonna be some some mix. It's so so on with her. You understand? Because what happened was they was diluted from the Europeans that makes them to the tribes. When they does slave, either they were slaves or they were the ones from the colonists. All right, you pick. So whoever would like to take that. Uh, so what FANA is, is a tribally trust chartered institution, which is a confederation of American Aboriginal tribes and nations that have been able to document their existence prior to U.S. colonization on their soils. Uh, FANA consists of about 7,000 tribal members up and down the east coast and into Puerto Rico and uh, the chartering members of course are the Pocanoke Nation. And let me touch on this too right so let's say 7,000 tribal members right now if you see this brother right here you're saying well if he's in the tribe then the 40 to 80 million black people that's in this country has to belong to some tribe the same thing you see with this brother. You might not have people that look like him in your family, but you damn sure got somebody that look like him in your family. And him. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So when you look at this brother right here, you're saying, well, damn, well, he might be a... No, 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 no. When you hear where you're from, then I'm going to explain to you. I'm Steve Sagamore, and the superior chief here. He's the chief of that nation, the Mashapag Nyingansi tribe. The Sand Hill Band of Lenape and Cherokee Indians out of New York, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Uh, FANA was trust chartered so that tribal nations who are operating in the capacity that we all are, which is through tribal trust charters established according to international trust treaty standards, could come together to work to develop policies, procedures, and then implement them that would be beneficial for our people. One of the main issues is that most times the only way that nations are able to gain any sort of recognition or acknowledgement is through a federal recognition process. But in the process of doing that, to simplify it all, what happens is the federal government creates a tribal trust and then inserts the U.S. Congress as the caretakers of the trust. So that's why you often hear of federal trust lands. Father has elected to not go that route because we don't feel that given our heritage and our bloodlines, we should be in any sort of recognition with any colonial entity. We were here before the U.S. got here. Why would we put ourselves into a position of subjugation underneath them now? 
Simultaneously, FADA has not rescinded any sort of U.S. citizenship, but rather reclassified ourselves to our proper status as American Aborigine. And an Aborigine, if you look at the legal definition, is of the original people. A lot of people looking at it just with normal terminology would think that it means not normal. But of course, we know legal terminology and common language terminology are often uh, conflicting. So when you look at the legal terminology, Aborigine means of the original people. So we are American Aborigine of the original people of these lands called America. Um, from that point forward, we've been moving in a manner that creates institutions for ourselves according to not only the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, but also the American Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, which was passed June 16, 2016 by the Organization of American States, which is binding upon the United States of America and also makes indigenous issues human rights issues. And that's really what this is all about, making sure that we're operating in our proper capacity, making sure that we are negotiating and working with local law enforcement agencies to inform them of who we are and who our people are, and also creating a better future for our tribal members and citizens because the federal recognition process has excluded most of us from that. And we don't feel like we should have to be proving ourselves to a colonial entity when we were here first and our bloodlines speak for themselves. How does that sound to you? So, um, in, in that same uh, line of, of question, in order to better understand, you know, the, the kind of the environment that uh, FANA is operating in and also what's going on in, 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 in politics and in um, social issues in the country, there's another organization called uh, NAAIP, and I'd like to, to kind of refer to that because I noticed that on social media there's been a lot of association uh, and indirect association and I think it needs to the Racial Integrity Act of 1924 talking about the legal edicts and, and, and uh, principles that he was talking about definitely met up to research standards he was speaking specifically about the Racial Integrity Act of 1924 and how it had misclassified a lot of Indians to the uh, classification of color and this resonated with me in particular because my fourth great grandfather, Chief Brister Michael of the Narragansett Indian Tribe, was chief of the tribe in 1881 when the state of Rhode Island illegally detribalized them. And my grandmother, rest in peace, before she passed, had done a lot of research on our historic. Well, you heard what he said. He said his family was illegally detribalized. So they were probably given Christian names, Turner Jones, Jackson, um whatever man you know the names um uh, negroes got or whatever um lee etc you know what i'm saying lineage and she was able to come across a copy of his death certificate and lo and behold on the death certificate he was listed as color so if they can do that to the chief of a tribe who's documented by the state in the 1881 commission's report on the indian affairs they can do that to any tribal member so when he was speaking of these things, he was also speaking of the United Nations Declaration, on the right to self-determination. All of these elements were adding up. So I ended up reaching out to the gentleman on uh, Facebook, and I said to him, hey, look, don't know too much about you, don't know too much about your institution, but you're saying that you can help if that started the King Philip's War. And then he's also the sixth generation great-grandson of King Philip, who was first treaty with the English. And then also, he's the ninth generation great-grandson of Pol Medicom, the nation. You would know the Massasoit from being the chief that greeted the pilgrims and saved them, being the chief that had the first Thanksgiving with the pilgrims, being the chief that ultimately signed the first treaty with the English. And then also, he's the ninth generation great-grandson of Pol Medicom, who's more commonly referred to as King Philip, who was the chief that started the King Philip's War. And then he's also the sixth generation great grandson of Simeon Simons, who was George Washington's hand picked bodyguard during the Revolutionary War. So, this is the lineage that we're dealing with. The chief here is direct lineage from the Powhatan uh, uh, royal line. Would you care to share a little bit about your heritage, Chief? Uh, originally, on traditional land is Kiskak, which is the York Town area of Virginia. Um, actually, our traditional land is currently the York Town Naval Base. Um, our families when at, at a point where they kind of wiped out or attempted to wipe out the tribes were dispersed among all bordering um, villages. The Chickahominy 
if you check out how many right behind the Puma keys, which my line actually goes to the chief line for all of those tribes. And what is the particular name of some of the chiefs that you picked? Uh, through all the, the last name of Bragby, um, William T. Bragby, um, Terrell Bragby, uh, 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 Alan Bragby, and also uh, Alexander Bragby. So once again, when you're talking about Fani, you're talking about tribes and nations, that there's no question of who we are, and no question of, of the substantiation of, of our heritage. Now, brother right there, he said he's Power Hanson. So he said he's from the Power Hanson tribe. He's saying he is direct link to the Power Hanson tribe. So you notice how dark he is, right? Because that's the first tribe that they encountered when they came here. Now, I keep all my pictures, you know what I'm saying? I mean, this is just, just pretty much research at this point in time. Um, but right here. See Power Hotson, right? You see how he look? There's no question that he's a Negro. See how he look? See grass skirt he got on? See all this right here? See the grass skirt he got on? Just pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. Alright? Remember, it's the first tribe that they encountered. Alright? More images of melanated people in Virginia. Or whatever now. Like I said, this is what I this is what I do my research off of. This grass skirt right here and this feather crown. I ain't sitting there. I'm not I don't have no blood. I don't have no um DNA samples for you. Um I do read literature. Um I do get into a lot of that, but my main focus is this grass skirt and this feather crown. This is what I focus on. Because there's a lot of pictures that I can't explain. Okay, so when you see that I got hundreds of pictures dealing with that. I don't even need to go. I'm just going to go to the more basic ones and show y'all something. Alright, so remember what we just seen, right? Now look at what you see. You see these feather crowns? Same little grass skirt. These are the same people from that tribe. This is Jamestown, Virginia. This is the same people from that tribe. The reason why you see him he obviously is a European and you see these people they black you understand so when you see these other images like these look they got the same grass skirt on with the same feather crown with the same crown on. and they saying new likely Gold Coast new Negroes because they was kidnapping them and shipping these, shipping them to different, the different islands, you know, as well as taking them back to Europe, you know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why they was, a lot of them was black and more. A lot of them was selling their people out. They was giving them, you know what I'm saying, these prestigious titles in Europe, let them study on them, you know what I'm saying? You see images like this, see the feather crown again, grass skirt. You know, I mean, it, it, it's basically simple when you when you understand what you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? When you look at the slave post and you see the slaves got the same exact thing going. You know, I mean, th there's hundreds of pictures like this. You know what I'm saying? Hundreds. If not, they all better look at Power Hudson. They all Power Hudson. Now, now, he, now, Rocker Flocker say he's a Native American. He don't know that the real... <laughs> World Aborigines are black people. When you see Native Americans, most of us identify with people who look like him right here. You wonder where he get his color from because he is a mulatto. You understand? Or oh, somewhere down the line, he got Europeans in his family, directly in his family, because he don't even have nappy hair. You understand? Now, you see this sister right here. She can be biracial or her mother can be half white and, and her father can be black or whatever. She could have came out looking like this. Now, you see a lot of people, this is where a lot of people start saying, well, what about the hair and all this other goofy shit? You know what I'm saying? That people don't understand. The, the reason the hair is the way it is because of the Europeans. That's the reason why they got this straight hair. 
And and remember, black people can straighten their hair out as well. You know what I'm saying? But remember, look, when you when you see images like this, right? Let me see. Hmm. Let me see. Let me find an image of the exact image I'm looking for. Well, you see images like this as well. See? Got the same grass skirt on, same feather crown. They came to Jamestown, Virginia. They took people from Jamestown, Virginia to the West Indies. And this is the reason why you see them looking for looking for the runaway slaves or whatever. So let's get back into a little bit more of this. But I'm not going to let them, you know what I'm saying, as far as the, the thing with um, a mop, you have to turn, you have to watch it, watch the whole video or whatever. But it's definitely something new I found, though. But I reached out to him and I explained this to him. I think he's still going. He's going to be going in on him back and forth. But let me see something. Somewhere around there. And one day I just got a phone call from him not rescinding any sort of U.S. citizenship, but rather we could international treaty, trust treaty standards could come together to work to develop policies, procedures. So I'm play it again one more time, let y'all hear a little bit in the, from the beginning and then I'm going to end the video. Alright, but what basically with these brothers and sisters right here, right, they basically saying that the try because I was looking for the HR, it's a HR, it's a House Joint Resolution, Um, I can't think of the, I can't, matter of fact, is it 194? Is it 194? Nah, it's not 194. Hold on. It might be. Let me see something real quick, people. Bear with me. I think it might be this one right here. It's this one right here. Let me see. It's this one right here. The, the um, House Joint Resolution 194. No, this hold up. This one is dealing with the um the African slavery. I'm looking for the one that's dealing with um uh, not this one. This one HR one ninety four. No, this ain't the one I'm looking for. I'm looking for the one that's dealing with um the tribes that they allow in and how much the tribes get. Um, let me see something. this one. So what they're saying that they wasn't recognized by the government and the tribes did not want to allow them into the um because I think that they got a certain amount a certain a certain amount of people you know what I might have to do another video on that. But I think I what I have what I think is the government only give money out to a certain amount of people. Now ain't nobody asking for no government money but they just wanted to be recognized into these tribes and they wasn't even recognized. And the funny thing, what the thing what I find funny is this. If you got apparently black people in some of these tribes, okay, you have to ask them, where did you come from? Are you a product of an African slave? Are you a product of an African slave and a so-called Native American? Or because, like I said, this shit, when you start looking at the Native American, this shit get real weird. Because you start looking at people who look like mulattoes. That's just as as as, as they just they just mixing in with more mulattoes. It's like a light skinned man mixing with a light skinned woman, and they have a light skinned child, and then and then they just mixing. But remember, these these a lot of these older people right here, his hair probably was a little bit more curlier when he was young, or whatever. You know, as you get older, your hair get a little bit more more thinner. So 
you know, but nonetheless, though, when you start seeing these, you start seeing them, none of us think, oh, they was mixed with black. You ain't thinking that the original tribes that they encountered was already a black tribe to begin with. So when you already see, when you see this brother right here, he says Power Hotten, you know what he talking about because when they originally came here, Power Hotten is a Negro. You know what I'm saying? Let me see. I showed y'all the picture of Power Hotten. I want, I got something else. I got a more clever picture of it. If I can find it. There you go right here. for that play anytime soon. There you go. That's in the Virginia Historical Society. This is what they said Power Hotson looked like. the back of the head. I don't know why it's playing weird like that, but that's pretty much what Power Hudson looked like. And you look at this brother right here. You know what I'm saying? So we already know Power Hudson was a Negro. And then implement them that would be beneficial for our people. One of the main issues is that most times the only way that nations are able to gain any sort of recognition or acknowledgement is through a federal recognition process. But in the process of doing that, to simplify it all, what happens is the federal government creates a tribal trust and then inserts the U.S. Congress as the caretakers of the trust. So that's why you often hear of federal trust lands. Father has elected to not go that route because we don't feel that given our heritage and our bloodlines, we should be in any sort of recognition with any colonial entity. We were here before the U.S. got here. Why would we put ourselves into a position of subjugation underneath them now? Simultaneously, FANA has not rescinded any sort of U.S. citizenship, but rather reclassified ourselves to our proper status as American Aborigine. And an Aborigine, if you look at the legal definition, is of the original people. A lot of people looking at it just with normal terminology would think that it means not normal. But of course, we know legal terminology and common language terminology are often uh, conflicting. So when you look at the legal terminology, Aborigine means of the original people. So we are American Aborigine of the original people of these lands called America. Um, from that point forward, we've been moving in a manner that creates institutions for ourselves according to not only... So I'm going to end it here, but just, just to let you know, you know, um, just claiming you Native American is just the first step. You gotta, like you said, change your classification. You know, it's a lot, man. I didn't change I, my class. I didn't did my classification like almost like three years ago, and it's still like a lot of things that still I'm trying to like find out or whatever. Like a lot of these brothers right here, they said that they can pinpoint their family directly to a tribe. A lot of us, man, we've been living all over. A lot of these people still live in the same towns that they, you know what I'm saying, that their family came from. So if you still live in the same towns and you're talking to the same people, so it's a lot easier. A lot of our family are broken up, broken up around the country, whatever. Some of us, some of us still live down south in the same communities in which their family lived in. You know what I'm saying? But for most of us, we live in the, we live, live in the inner cities, um, and, um, you know what I'm saying, and um, the projects and a lot of these little townhouses that these people built or whatever and let us live in or whatever. But nonetheless, though, we don't live in communities with our family. We move, move with, we live in communities with other other um, aborigines or whatever that might be from other tribes that we don't even know. So that's what you got to do. You got to connect yourself and, and, and reach out to this, this um, brother right here. Um... You know, if you want to look the video up and do some research and see how you could probably get in contact with him, you could probably look him up on Facebook. Um, I'm going to look him up on Facebook, and I'm going to try to get his information as well. 
Um, this is a video right here. I'm gonna say Hamak. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Say N A I P. It says a fraud. It say find a war people and organizations in Indian country. All right. So with that being said, man, this is a tonsillous one, and I'm out. Peace. Don't uh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. All right. Peace out, my people.